So moving to the next experiment. The aim of the experiment is to show that chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis. Okay. So what are the materials needed or things required for this experiment? The first and the most important thing is we need a plant that is having variegated leaf. Okay, the term is this. Variegated leaf. What is the meaning of variegated? I will just show one example of a leaf. This is actually one variegated leaf. So you can understand what is the difference between a common leaf and this type of leaf. Okay, see here. This is a normal leaf, purely green in color. Whereas in this leaf you can see patches of white color is present. That means this particular leaf is not purely green in color. So such a leaf which is actually having different colors along with the green sometimes some reddish tone will be there. Or along with the green, sometimes white, like this, white patches will be there. That type of leaf is what is called as variegated leaf. Example also can come for the exam. Examples are croton, geranium, etc. Okay. So learn at least two examples. Croton, geranium, coleus, you can write any plant. All these are garden plants. So all these plants, what is the speciality? They are having variegated leaf. I hope you understood what is variegated leaf. Variegated leaf means along with the green color, there will be patches of some other colors also. That type of leaf is what is called as variegated leaf. Okay? Now, what you have to do is, we have to take a potted plant having variegated leaf. That means we have to take a potted plant of croton, geranium or coleus. And what is the first step? Place this potted plant in a dark room for one or two days. What is the purpose? This is for destarching. Now after placing this for one or two days, take this potted plant and place it in sunlight for few hours. Say two or three hours. After that, pluck out a leaf. Okay? So after placing it in sunlight, pluck out one leaf. Imagine that this is the leaf. Then what you have to do is, you need to have a white paper. Okay, like this. What you have to do, place this variegated leaf on the white paper like this. Okay, and draw its outline. You actually have to use a pencil. I am just showing it with like this. Okay, mark the outline of this leaf like this. Like this. With pencil. Then what you have to do is. Mark the green and the non-green parts. How you will do that? You know that all these are non-green parts. So I will be just pressing. If you are pressing it through. If you are pressing this by using a pencil. The impression will be coming there. Okay. The non-green parts alone. Just press it like this. Okay, when I am using the sketch pen, actually the leaf is getting torn. Okay, so just press it with a pencil so that the impression will be coming on the other side. So see, okay, all these areas where I have shown this is actually the non-green portions like this. See, okay, wherever you have marked. So if it is actually done with a pencil means the impression will be very clear. Now what you have to do is take this leaf and carry out the steps of the starch test. What are the steps of starch test? 
they put this leaf in boiling water that is to kill the cells after that take out this leaf and dip it in a test tube containing methylated spirit then you have to place this in a beaker containing water and boil it so indirectly we are boiling this methylated spirit so actually what will be happening to this leaf the leaf will become pale that means the leaf will be become colorless what is the purpose of boiling it in methylated spirit that is to remove chlorophyll again take out the leaf and dip it in boiling water then imagine that this is a white tile spread the leaf on the white tile the leaves shape and all will be lost okay by the time when you are doing all these steps the leaves shape and all will be lost then just to pour iodine what will be your observation when you are i am just showing that okay imagine that this is the paper and this was the shape of our leaf like this and all these portions were actually white all this okay you can see here all these here also like this the midrib and all is actually whitish in color so this is actually a white tile okay we are pouring iodine to this leaf after doing all these steps what will be your observation all these were green parts okay where i have not shown this lines so all the green parts will be turning blue black and all the non green parts non green means where i have shown these lines like this they are the non green parts all these portions will be brown from this what can you conclude from this you can conclude that after placing the potted plant in sunlight the green plants actually started photosynthesis so starch is actually present on all these green parts that is why the green parts coloration will be turning blue black after adding one or two drops of iodine but the non green parts will be turning brown showing that the non green parts does not contain starch so from this what can you understand from this experiment it is very clear that chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis i hope the experiment is clear to you okay so aim of the experiment is to show that chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis just remember we need a plant having variegated leaf example i told you croton geranium coleus etc then carry out all these steps now further again in the coming experiments i will not explain what is starch test or iodine test i will be simply telling starch test is conducted okay because two times i explained what is starch test or iodine test again just to recall in starch test or iodine test means first dipping the leaf in boiling water to kill the cells then boiling it in methylated spirit to remove chlorophyll again dipping it in boiling water to make the leaf soft then spreading it on a white tile and adding iodine this is starch test or iodine test if starch is present the leaf will show blue black if starch is absent the leaf will show brown color okay so further in the coming experiments i will not be explaining what is starch test or iodine test you simply i will be telling that starch test is carried out moving to the next experiment aim of the experiment what is the aim aim is to show that sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis okay sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis so again in this first step is the same we have to have a potted plant keep it in dark room for 1 to 2 days after that select one of the leaf don't pluck it out i am not having potted plant so i am just showing the condition imagine that the leaf is still attached to the plant 
Okay, select one of the leaf like this. Then what you have to do is you have to have a black paper with a design cut on it. Here there is a design that is a diamond shape is actually made in this black paper. Okay, so place this black paper onto this leaf like this with the help of a paper clip. Okay, we'll be having paper clip. Clip it on both the sides and imagine that this leaf is still attached to the plant. Okay, we are not plucking the leaf. So what is the step? Again, I am repeating. First is you have to take a well-watered potted plant, place it in dark room for one to two days. After that, select any one of the leaf. Place a black paper with a design cut on it. And after, how will you place this? This is with the help of a paper clip. When you are attaching the paper clip, this will be fitting it firmly to this leaf surface like this. So, you just remember that the leaf is still attached to the plant. Okay, it is firmly attached to the plant. After placing the black paper with the design, you have to place this potted plant in sunlight for a few hours. So, actually what will happen at that time? All these parts of the leaf will be getting the sunlight. Even this part of the leaf will get sunlight. But the part that is actually below this black paper is actually not getting any sunlight. Okay. So again I am repeating the step. First is placing the potted plant in a dark room for 1 to 2 days. After that select a leaf. Place a black paper with a design cut on it with the help of two paper clips. After that, place this potted plant in sunlight for a few hours. Then pluck out this leaf. And carry out the start test. So what will be your observation? I am just drawing this. I am not explaining start test because in the previous video I explained it many times. Okay? So this is our leaf. I actually placed the black paper here with that diamond design over here. Okay, so this was actually exposed to sunlight. So what will be your observation after carrying out a starch test? You will be able to see that all these portions, I am drawing the dots here, this will be blue-black. Even this portions, will be blue black and even this diamond I told you this is also having an opening so sunlight was able to enter into this portion so this portion is also blue black but what about this portion that I am shading okay the portion which I am shading like this did not receive any sunlight so what will be the color after adding iodine all these portions will be turning brown. Okay. So these two portions will turn blue black. Even that portion where that diamond shape was made. You can make any shape. Okay. I just made one diamond shape to show you. So through this diamond shape sunlight was able to enter into that portion of the leaf. So this portion also will be turning blue black. But the portions that was below this black paper will be turning brown. So what is your conclusion? We can conclude that sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis. Why? Because all the areas that was exposed to sunlight will be preparing starch. That is why all these regions showed blue-black after adding iodine. Whereas the portion that is actually kept below this black paper is not getting any sunlight. So as a result of which all those portions that was below the black paper will be turning brown. Showing that no starch is present in all these regions. Whereas starch is synthesized in the other portions that was exposed to sunlight. So from this experiment it is very evidently clear that Sunlight is necessary for photosynthesis. Okay, now moving to the next experiment. To show that, next factor that is needed is 
carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis. Again, the same procedure. What you have to do is, we are having a potted plant. Place it in dark room for 1 to 2 days. This is for restarching purpose. After that, remember that this leaf is still attached to the plant body, okay? Imagine that I am having and I will be drawing that condition here, okay? So this is a potted plant. I am just drawing a rough diagram with a leaf. This is the leaf that we are going to select. So we placed the spotted plant in a dark room for one to two days. After that, imagine that this is the leaf. Half the leaf is actually placed in a beaker like this. A flat bottomed beaker with the help of cork, split cork. Split cork means the cork will be in two pieces. Insert the piece into that. Okay, that is split cork. You will be keeping this leaf in between the split cork like this and you will be entering that split cork into the mouth of this funnel. Not funnel, sorry, the flat bottomed flask. So half the leaf is placed inside a beaker. What is inside the beaker? The beaker will, is containing a chemical substance known as potassium hydroxide. Okay, so we are having a beaker containing potassium hydroxide. Half of the leaf, imagine that this is the leaf. Half the leaf is kept inside the beaker containing potassium hydroxide. The other half of the leaf is actually kept outside. Okay, we are having standard or okay for attaching this and not doing that. After making the arrangement like this, Carefully take this and place it in sunlight for few hours. So I'll repeat the step. First is place a potted plant in dark room for one to two days. After that, select any one of the leaf. Keep half the leaf inside a flat bottomed flask containing a split cork. Which contains, the beaker is actually containing potassium hydroxide. So half the leaf is placed inside the beaker containing potassium hydroxide and the other half of the leaf is actually exposed out. After keeping the experimental setup like this, place this in sunlight for few hours. After one or two hours, pluck out this leaf. Okay, imagine that this is the leaf. Pluck out the leaf and they carry out the starch test. What will be your observation? I am drawing this single leaf here again. After starch test or iodine test, we will be able to see that this half part of the leaf which was inside the flat bottomed flask will be turning brown. Whereas the other half portion which was actually exposed out will be showing blue-black color. Why is it so? It is because I told you here we are having a chemical substance that is potassium hydroxide. What is the use of potassium hydroxide? Potassium hydroxide will be absorbing the carbon dioxide. That means this half part of the leaf is not getting any carbon dioxide because of the presence of potassium hydroxide. Whereas the other half the leaf is outside this beaker. So other half leaf is actually getting carbon dioxide, sunlight and all the other things. So as other half is able to get carbon dioxide, the other half of the leaf that was exposed out will be showing blue-black color which shows the presence of starch. Whereas the half part of the leaf that was inside the beaker containing potassium hydroxide shows brown coloration due to the absence of starch. Because as no carbon dioxide was available to this part of the leaf, there is no starch present. But as carbon dioxide is available to the remaining half part of the leaf, 
that half part will show blue black color this experiment clearly shows that this carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis so in these two experiments i did not again explain what is starch test or iodine test in the previous videos i explained it many times what is starch test or iodine test so this is actually known as moles half leaf experiment okay that you don't have to learn the name and all this is moles half leaf experiment because half the leaf is inside and half the leaf is outside so this is known as moles half leaf experiment coming to the last experiment of photosynthesis to show that oxygen is produced during photosynthesis okay that is the a oxygen is produced during photosynthesis so you will see what are the requirements or what are the things that we need here in this particular experiment we require few things one is a beaker next is water then test tube and the most important thing is aquatic plant okay that is hydrilla or elodia both are same either hydrilla or elodia okay so all these are the requirements so what we have to do is we have to take few twigs of hydrilla or elodia and what we have to do we have to place that twig in a funnel i forgot to mention we need a funnel also here okay so we are having a funnel like this so this is actually hydrilla twig okay i am showing this small leaves will be there which will be present on either side like this the entire stem will be covered like this i am not showing that so what we have to do is remove some leaf from that stem tip okay here all these leaves will be there i am just showing lines so that it will be little clear to you like this leaves will be there on the hydrilla twig we are taking two to three twigs of hydrilla or elodia now what you have to do is here i told you we are not having leaves in this portion okay that portion should be kept in this stem of the funnel this is known as the stem of the funnel so here all these areas will be having leaves like this okay so this is the first setup so we are having a funnel place two to three hydrilla twigs inside the funnel make sure that this stem portion that is devoid of the leaf should be inserted into the stem of the funnel okay now what you have to do is we are having a beaker containing water slowly take this funnel with hydrilla or elodia twig place this in the inverted position like this make sure that the stem of the funnel should be below the water surface this diagram can sometimes come for the exam okay so when you are drawing this diagram for the exam you should be very very careful the stem should be below the water level what is present inside this we have to show hydrilla or elodia twigs like this okay few hydrilla or elodia twigs like this i have shown three twigs now let us label that this is hydrilla this is water this is beaker now what you have to do is i told you about a test tube imagine that this is a test tube i don't have the test tube at all okay so just imagine this is the test tube completely fill the test tube with water now what you have to do is 
cover the mouth of the test tube by using your thumb like this. Okay? This is the mouth of the test tube. Just imagine this is the mouth of the test tube. Cover it with your thumb like this. Okay? Slowly invert the test tube like this. Okay? So that the water is not coming out. Now what you have to do? Place this. You can insert inside. Okay? So place this test tube just above the funnel like this. Leave it. So the condition will be like this. See. Okay. Now this entire test tube also will be filled with water. Because I told you the test tube is actually containing water. So if you are not properly doing what will happen is that the entire water from the test tube will be falling into the beaker. So it should not happen. You should be very very careful when the, we are carrying out this particular experiment. Okay. Carefully cover this and bring it on top of the stem of the funnel. The inverted funnel and just to drop the test tube. So that the test tube also will be completely filled with water. So this is the experimental setup. Now what you have to do? You have to place this in sunlight. Either you can show sunlight like this. Draw the diagram of a sun and show the arrows like this. Or simply you can write a sunlight and show the arrows like this. That means the experimental setup is actually exposed to sunlight. So when the experimental setup is exposed to sunlight, within few minutes, you will be able to see bubbles will be coming out like this. Okay. What are these bubbles actually? These bubbles are nothing but these are actually the oxygen bubbles given out. Okay. And if you are keeping this for a few more minutes, you will be able to see a fall in the water level. So actually what will be filled here in this space? This space will be getting filled with oxygen gas. Now how will you test whether the gas released is oxygen? So lift up the test tube and introduce the glowing splinter. Okay, the spelling is this glowing splinter. So when glowing splinter is introduced, what will happen? It will burst up into flames. Thus proving that the released gas is oxygen. So our aim of the experiment was to show that oxygen is produced during photosynthesis. The diagram can sometimes come for the exam for you to draw. So please keep in mind when you are drawing, the stem of the funnel should be below the water level test tube, then don't forget to show the sunlight. Okay, show the arrows. Either you can draw the sun like this or simply write sunlight here. Okay, simply write a sunlight. So what you will be able to see that a few bubbles will be given out. What are those bubbles? These are actually oxygen bubbles. How will you test whether the gas is oxygen? By bringing a glowing splinter, it will burst up into flames. Thus proving that the released gas is oxygen. I hope all the experiments related to this chapter is clear to everyone.